Well, good Tuesday morning to you folks. Hopefully things are going well with you. I hope you had a good night's rest and you are ready to face the day. I'm going to read to you from a revival today, um, November 12th, 1873. Drawing near to God, let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And that's Hebrews 10, 22. The British people did not know quite what to think of D.L. Moody, this American evangelist from across the pond. William Moody described the skepticism of the English people to his father's evangelistic campaign in Great Britain. When all day meeting was announced to be held at Newcastle on November 12th, many anticipated failure. But those who had felt the reviving power and the love of God and had made this meeting a matter of earnest prayer knew that it could not fail. Not only did the people from Newcastle attend in large numbers, but visitors from Sunderland, Shields, Jarrow, and neighboring towns came in by train and filled the church and galleries. Businesses, home, cares, and work, pleasure, and idleness had been left behind by the hundreds of earnest Christians who came to worship God and to hear his word. A six-hour meeting staggers the mind of most modern Christians. We think if we give God an hour on Sunday, it is plenty, and when the preacher better not go past noon. For those who truly want revival, however, we must draw nigh to God before we can expect him to draw nigh to us. James 4, 8 admonishes and promises, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Too often, even in church, our minds are on something other than God and his word. We are cumbered and burdened with things other than God and his word. We are cumbered and burdened with the cares of this world. And the seed of God's word falls on hard ground and is easily plucked up by Satan. What will you do to prepare the soil of your heart before you attend a service at your church this week? As we enter into the house of God, many, may we take a moment to quiet our hearts before God so that he can speak and be heard. Let's not be in a hurry to leave, but rather ponder that which we have heard and determine to respond in obedience throughout the days ahead. I mean, you know, it should go without saying that the reason we attend church in the first place, enjoy the fellowship. Yes, uh, there's music there. Uh, and the preaching of the word of God is to hear uh, the instruction of God or what he would say to us. But we are together to worship God. An assembly that so many will uh, let fall by the wayside. Maybe they don't attend. Maybe you're one of those that's watching this today and, and maybe you don't attend church anywhere. I'm not going to knock you. It is what it is. You'll do what you'll do. I'll do what I'll do. I will tell you that there are churches all over the area where you live that would, would love to have you just stop in sometime. If you could make it, I guarantee you that you would be, you would be something exciting for many pastors to see you just come in their church and visit with them. I've been a pastor for years and I know that I watch people come and I watch people go and often wonder, you know, what it is, why is it that they don't stay those people that leave, it grieves my heart to see them go. Um, it is what it is there as well. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you just can't keep people and it's not always um, your fault or the fault of the church or the minister. But there's a reason why we attend church. And so when you are able to, when you go, 
Just seek what God has for you. Seek what he would have for you uh, through uh, the preaching of the word. And the people that, that pray and they ask God to give them the message for the people that will hear. Uh, that's important because that's for you today. Even something, what, what we may consider to be as simple as this, what I do right here. There are times that I'll think to myself, you know, maybe I should go back and re-record that and say something else. And, and I don't, I very seldom do I ever do that because I just think to myself, if I give you, if I pour my heart out to you and give you what God says to give you, I don't know who you are that's watching this. I don't know on any given day who may watch this, but I hope that it's something that speaks to your heart and gives you direction today. I've never sang this song before. I've heard it. Uh, I may have played it before, but I've never sang it. It's, it's, it's an older song, but uh, it's a... It's a good song, so we'll see. Just happened to be laying here in a stack of songs that I have. On the other side of Jordan, just beyond that shining strand, I'll be resting in the beauty of that land. I'll go walking garden with that man of Galilee who's the master of that troubled stormy sea I'm waiting in the shadows for that shining angel band that will come and take me home to that land on the other side of Jordan they are waiting there I know and I'm ready Lord I'm ready now to go on the other side of Jordan there's so much I want to see There's a mansion in that city Waiting me I'll possess it on that morning When I rise to weep no more I'll be living on that everlasting I'm waiting in the shadows for that shining angel band that will come and take me home to that land. On the other side of Jordan, they are waiting there, I know, and I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready now to go. Lord, I thank you that uh, I can say that I'm ready. Do I want to leave my family right now? No, but should you call today? Should I meet my fate out on the road somewhere? I thank God that I'm ready and not because I'm good, because I've been born again. That's not what I've done. That's what you've done. God, I thank you for that. I love you. I pray that you would bless those that hear this today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks. Have a great day. See you Wednesday.